what is going on everybody james jackson here back again with another video if you're new to this channel once again i am do tips tricks news and reviews for the film and video making industry so if this is content you like please make sure hit the like buttons so the algorithms can pick up and we can grow this community and grow this channel and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth thank you all for who do subscribe and who support me i greatly do appreciate it so we have a lot to talk about with da vinci resolve 18 there is so much going on and i'm so happy to take a look at this um there's so much stuff going on. I'm going to start creating little videos just to go in depth on the individual things that I find appealing that I think you should definitely be aware of. Um, and that is what I'm hoping to do is to just to go more in depth on these discussions. Speaking of in depth, that is the first place where we are going to start with today. And that is with arguably my favorite new feature update and that is the depth map and uh i'm telling you right now this is a feature i am probably going to use so much because it gives so much um options of what we're going to do with the which what you could do with your cameras regardless of you know micro four thirds mirrorless you can it really can help shape the way you look and you'll get to see it today. So I got a couple clips. Uh, this, I got this shot of um, my sister when we were doing a, just a couple shoots at the beach. And then this is a shot at me from my video from yesterday. So uh, let's get started. By the way, both of these were shot on the Panasonic Lumix GH6, in case you guys are wondering. And I basically built a, just a node that I pretty u typically use to start off with. Um, and I've also included a LUT that I have actually custom built, uh, for this and this I'll turn this grade that I did before. So this is normally, uh, and let me go full screen. This is normally what it would look like if you guys are interested. Um, I'm going to be putting out a LUT pack for the GH6 soon. So definitely stay tuned for something like that. And then I just added a little bit of an orange and teal look to the image just to give it some you know nice little color separations but now we're going to do some other things because even then you know as you can look as we go to our vector scopes a lot of our colors are in this uh green and yellow uh zone uh so we it's still got a lot of similarities so we will ha how can you create more depth well obviously it's through luminance if you can have your subject and your background it's different levels that can help with separation and that's where this comes in and there's so many ways you can do it where you can uh separate luminance you can separate um you can separate color you can separate with some of the other effects with like the different blur effects which i'll show later there's so many different ways that this could help just make your image stand out so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first. Now, normally when you want to add something in, you would either do alt S or it's, you right click and add a node. You don't want to do these with this one and a lot of the newer features that are with Resolve 18 because it really limits the amount of capabilities that you could do. So what you want to do actually instead is just drag it and then drop it right on. So as you can see, it's connected. And now we get this sort of thing and this is sort of what the typical pop up screen will be. And this is, you got your depth map preview. Now there's different qualities. There's faster and there's better. For this, I'm going to go with the faster option just to have things play out. Uh, the other thing you need to be aware of is the different color range. So anything that is black is not affected by your image, uh, affected when you do the grade or your masking. Uh, anything that's in the white or closer to the lighter gray is affected by your Great. So in this case, my foreground or my subject in this case is being is going to be affected. In this case, I don't want to do that. I want to sort of de lower the levels of the background. So I'm going to invert this. So now we got the inverts. So now we got to sort of make some adjustments. So I'm going to go to the isolation target depth first because this sort of uh, helps get sort of the range of where I want things to be. So. In this case, I want to pull in as much of the background 
there so it's isolating her out of what we're being affected and then i'm gonna pull my tolerance level up so just to make sure and then i'm gonna soften it up just sort of keep the edges nice and firm then i'm gonna go add the resulting map adjustment now here is sort of where you get to decide what it, your far limit affects your background your near limit affects your foreground but how much of the effect is going to bleed in so in this case how much of the um in this case as you'll see here how much of the background is going to bleed into the foreground how much of the foreground is going to bleed into the background or how much of the back so now the foreground is getting more bleeded in to the effects of the background and the now the uh foreground is getting more uh, uh bleeded into the background you get the gist of it uh we're not going to want to really adjust this here and now we got map finesse. So this is where you sort of get those little extra details. So like things like it gets more of the hair. So how much of so how much you want to pull off of that. So it really just sort of kind of emphasizes that. So we kind of want to make sure it's okay getting her rings. But then I also want to blur things again. I like blurring it just to help uh, keep the separations going going in. So and then you got a global bend. I but I don't like touching this. I think it's pretty much that way. So this is a, a pretty decent, pretty clean background uh, separation. So now what we're going to do is now we are going to add another node. And I'm going to, and anytime you add a node, you want to make sure you take the alpha, so drag it over so it, co it, it, it carries over. And also make sure you have your depth math preview turned off. So in this case, I... Uh, we, we could just stop, touch here, but I am going to add actually a layer mixer, and there's a reason why. So, and then I'm going to add another alpha channel to this one, so they're both affected. And now I'm going to label this one background, and I'm going to label this one foreground. So, if you see the key mapping with both, they are affect both are targeting the background because that's how the depth map works. But in this case, with our foreground label, we're going to just flip it. So now, if I want to make adjustments to the back uh, to the foreground, I can affect them here, and then I can affect the background here. Now let's go into our HDR palette wheel because I like doing fine details because we are still working in the V log V gamut uh, color space. So that means we get still got a wide color depth to play with. So in this case, I am going to start. I'm going to take my waveform. I'm going to show my waveforms, and now I'm going to start dropping the background to about I'll say about 37. And as you can see here, on off, just how much of a difference that makes. Look at that. And now our subject is standing out even better by just this adjustments like just what this one little thing just helping bring it in and sort of like giving a nice separation is awesome and let's load this up full screen and you can see before after before after now i personally think she's a bit too bright uh on this so i'm actually going to go here and once again, I'm going to stay in the HDR palette wheel, go V-Log and V-Gamut. And in this case, I'm not going to do the global thing. Instead, I only want to target uh, the skin. I want to target the skin, the skin only. I want to sort of, sort of flatten that out to sort of bring it more in line. So I'm going to start dragging this down. The give it sort it's, and we'll bring it up right about there and as we pull this up see before where it was like very very hot now there's a now her skin is a lot more even before after and if we go to the and if we grab the whole thing we can go full screen and you can see what it was like before after before after so we still created a nice separation a, a nice separation of background from her to it so she's still illuminated higher to the background and it helps separates her and that's what i absolutely love about this feature so you can really make your colors and your images pop 
Um, we can go if, and then we can go crazy, crazier with the background and say, Hey, we want to, uh, we want to give a sort of, we want to give the background, uh, oops. Now you can go give it sort of like a dune look where it's only, and you're kind of only affecting her. Now you can sort of start seeing on the outer edges, but you can sort of tweak that again before, after. And again, you could tweak those outer edges uh, to make sure so it doesn't look as crazy. Let's reset that. But these are just options that you have. So this is one of the really cool things I absolutely love. And again, it's something that you could do sort of more on the blur. So here we have me here, and we're going to do the same thing here real quickly. I'm going to add the depth chart. I'm going to turn the faster off. Uh, I'm going to invert it, so I'm getting my backgrounds. I'm going to start with isolating. I want to try to isolate this. I'll bring up the tolerance. Right there, and then I'm going to soften this off. Turn. Actually, I'm going to bring down the softener. And then I'm going to just get some more detail. Bring up the blur. Bring up the blur a little. And that's pretty much all I need. And now I'm going to add a secondary low, secondary layer. And let me bring this in so it'll be easier to see. And then I'm going to add a layer. And I'm going to add the mask to both. And then let me turn the depth map preview off. Uh, I'm going to make this my foreground. So I'm going to invert this. But I'm going to. But you already know. So now I can go to the blur right here. And now let's, because as you can see here, actually, before I affect this, you know, GH5, first of all, we're right by a window, you know, as you can see by the vector scope, everything is in this area there. So there's everything. It's, it's a pretty flat image. So let's try to find some ways to bring it up. So with the background, we're going to start blurring. And just look at this. Before, after. We added just a little bit of depth, a little bit of ways to separate our background and to just pull ourselves a little bit out a little bit more. It's just a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy with it. And we can also still go again, and I can just go ahead and go into this offset and add a little bit of a teal. Uh, and we're going to add just a little bit of a teal to the background. Come on. Oh. So we go full screen here again. Oops, sorry about that. We're gonna be see before, after, before, after. We just and we're not and again we're not even affecting, but we're adding. We're just go adding a little bit of ways to help pull the background and just give ourselves some separation. And this is why I think this is going to be one of the tools I'm absolutely going to love with this new feature with DaVinci Resolve just to help find ways to just create some interesting looks, interesting depth to any type of whatever image you may be doing. Now, you don't want to, again, push the, the blur too crazy because then if you push the thing cra too so crazy, now it looks like you're in a zoom, uh, a zoom effect. So you want to be, you know, again, you want to make, you want to make enough changes to where it's subtle. It doesn't look where it doesn't look too, uh, too fake. And there's, and there is, oops. And there's even other ways. So we can reset this. We can, we can reset this. And then, cause remember there's other blurs. So we can add a lens blur here. Uh, we can go with real apertures, hexagon, uh, speed options we go so we'll go with the blur size we'll you know we don't want to go too crazy with it and then the blade curves but you can again you can make so many different different sh you can make different changes and how the highlights bloom and all of this could just be something you can do to sort of make the change to help Get, get yourself some separation again before after before after so this is i just wanted to quickly show you guys this this is what i'm definitely going to tinker it to see how is the best way to master this but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys think about this 
leave your comments below, and as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and until next time, take care, everyone.